Hey, welcome to our episode of Chaz Beer Reviews. A pretty special beer today. This was made by uh, Brendan Palfreyman of Syracuse. He's a home brewer. I know him through Twitter and Facebook. I never actually met him in person. And he actually brewed it here at Rare Form Brewing Company. Well, not here. Well, a few miles over in Troy, New York. The Rare Form has a program called Scale Up where if you're a home brewer, you bring a bottle of your home brew and they really, really like it. They'll let you come in and brew it on their commercial system. Anyways, it's he said it was inspired by... Uh, in fact, I'll put the link in the description box. He wrote a blog um, for me on my uh, Times Union Beer Nut uh, blog column. So it was inspired by all the great you know IPAs and pale ales up in Vermont. I don't need to name them. You know what they are. So he just wanted to do a homebrew version of it. Uh, let me just read the description real quick. Majority of the grist is American Turo with moderate additions of flaked oats and flaked wheat. Hops are all Citra and Simcoe, but none are added during the boil. This is an English strain from Y Yeast Labs in California. So, let's get on with it. It's kind of a carrot kind of color, um, especially right there. It's, you know, depending on where I'm holding it, but it's, you know, kind of a really... Uh, kind of like a rusty orange, slight kind of like pale brown. Uh, this was a growler fill straight at the tap room. The problem is when you get a growler fill, like it, t it tends to get a little undercarbonated. So, you know, it had about a two finger head when I poured it. It's kind of disappeared by now. Um, let's get on the aroma. Wow. I mean, it's just like super juicy, just tons and tons of, uh, tropical fruit it's more like it's not so much citrus as like grapefruit orange lemon stuff like that it's more like passion fruit kiwi peach I don't, well peach i guess wouldn't be a tropical fruit like mango you know tropical fruits like it, it smells like juice so i hope it tastes as good as it smells cheers and it does um yeah i can definitely see the whole vermont what I kind of call the New England style um, IPA or well, pale ale. I mean, if you had Hill Farmstead, Hetty Topper, uh, Lawson's Finest Liquids, a lot of those guys, uh, Fiddler's Head, that, there's a bunch out in Vermont that I haven't even tried yet. Um, there's definitely a theme to how they like their IPAs and their pale ales. This is definitely a pale ale. They're not purporting it to be an IPA. I thought it was really interesting, though, that he doesn't actually use hops in the boil. He said like they put it in like at the right of it finished mashing and then then dry hop. So a lot of the I'm sure the aroma it does smell great. I want this I want this as an air freshener or, or a scented candle or something like that. Or like a spray, you know. I would just want to spray that throughout my whole house just but it's definitely, you know, kind of I hate for lack of a better word, kind of a generic kind of base malt malt character. I mean, the hops are just totally dominating this, and, and I like the way that they use it is that they use the hops here for uh, for flavoring and aroma, and it's actually not too bad as far as the bitterness goes. Mm, definitely get a little bit of, like, orange, tiny little bit of, like, orange sherbet kind of ice cream flavor in there. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think it's really tasty, definitely a fantastic pale ale. This is, this is a beer I'd want more in the summer than the winter. Uh, well, I think it's great year-round, but... Um, I would love I love to have cans of this in July to take to the track well, in August I guess but anyways let's rate this uh, for aroma I'm gonna go nine out of ten I thought it, uh, I thought it smelled great appearance well we got some nice uh, lacing on there it I saw some I was looking at uh, when I was at the tap room I saw some other glasses and they had about the same characteristic as this at the tap room. I'm probably going to go 4 out of 5 on appearance. For taste, um, I'm going to go 9 out of 10 again. I forgot to mention, this is 6.2 ABV. You know, so it's, um, you know, nice kind of perfectly medium body all around. I, I think I might actually taste like a tiny little bit of like alcohol warmth on it. Yeah, anyways, 9 out of 10. For palate, I'm going to go my full 5 out of 5. I think it's like ridiculously, <laughs> ridiculously easy. It's fun to drink, I will say that. It's very um, smooth in the mouth. I mean, it's a tad undercarbonated because I got it off a growler fill, but 
Um, you know, uh, I would love this to be like a little bit more spastic and crisp, but as it is, you know, I am kind of giving the benefit of the doubt off the ground. I feel like I said, uh, really refreshing, easy to drink. Like my mom could drink this. You know, overall, I'm gonna go. Uh, let's see here. I'll say. I'll say 17 out of 20, which is a total score of a 4.4 on right beer, which is a 9 out of 10 on my scale. I mean, it's really close to being, like, what I would consider, like, fantastic, awesome, outstanding, world-class beer. Um, I think I don't know what else they could really do to improve it. Um, maybe it, I'd probably, you know, just one more point somewhere here and there um, would bump it up to a 10, you know. A bigger, fatter head, um, clarity, something like that. Um, but as far as everything else, I mean, it's just really, really good. So, uh, thanks to Rendon for letting me run his uh, blog on this uh, on my blog, which I'll put a link to down below. I think this beer turned out really, really well. Fantastic. I would love to try the homebrew version of it to see how it compares to the commercial version, but. Yeah, I think this is a great beer. I think uh, rare beer should, or not rare beer, rare form should consider uh, putting this on tap year round. They should just buy the recipe from Brendan. So I'm going on very, very long here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.